chats and I'm really excited because I've got Graham Brown with us today. Hello, Graham. How are you? I'm very, very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And what we're talking about today is creating motivated value and happy teams so that they have optimal performance. And this is key, especially for the continuity of our people and the stability of our teams. So first of all, Graham, whereabouts are you located? Uh, based in Ely, yeah, just east of Cambridge. That's where I settled, oh. leaving the army. Lovely, lovely. And who is Graham Brown, just quickly? Oh, um, I, an ex-military recruiter, uh, I, a dad, a husband, and uh, a vocal coach and musical director. Wow, it sounds like so many things, and it sounds like you've got loads of experience. So would you like to tell us about your experience and what you actually do? What does that mean? Sure. So um, I, uh, I served in the military as a musician um, and uh, uh, spent a year at the Military School of Music, Neller Hall, uh, veteran of the first Gulf War, um, and uh, uh, mulled around in a few sales jobs post-service, but uh, got into uh, got into recruitment with no recruitment experience. But uh, I felt I could add um, quite a lot uh, to veterans leaving the leaving the forces set up frs in 2001 and uh, we've been doing that ever since and and in that time we've helped over 10,000 veterans into work you know something i'm i'm very proud of and my side gig is as a musical director and uh, and vocal coach so i prepare kids for drama school and uh, and things like that so i get to do two of the greatest things in the world that i love Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. And you, you're you obviously very, very enthusiastic about what you do. And, you know, you've had such an experience. I sort of take my head off to any veterans. So well done. So let's think about the reason why I've invited you here today, Graham, is because you've obviously worked with so many different types of teams when you were in the military and then in recruitment and worked with different organizations, understanding their team. So why is it important for leaders to motivate their teams so that they feel really valued? Well, you can't get the best at your people if they don't feel valued. Mm -hmm. And you will never recruit the best talent if you're not tuned into that. So they'll, they'll yeah. either leave or they'll recognize this and not join you in the first place. Um, and. Uh, uh, military leadership uh, is very much lead from the front. So I, I had a, a fantastic boss in the forces who would never ask me to do anything he wasn't prepared to do himself. So we yeah. would uh, had a great muck in spirit. You always knew who the boss was, but there's an incredible amount of respect there. And I was lucky enough to place him when he left the forces. Um, oh, so wow. that was uh, that was quite a, a fun spend being able to put a little bit uh, a little bit back. But uh, I think. Uh, Get, getting a symbiotic fit is very, very important. I, I, I've got what I call the three pillars of successful hiring, which is also used for retaining great people as well. Um, yeah. Skills and ability uh, is the first thing. So somebody must be aligned with the skills and ability of what the role needs uh, and what the company is asking for. Uh, natural energy, so how somebody is built. Are they detail focused? Are they people focused? Naturally creative, complete a finish, all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then the, the, the culture and the values, which you, you, you mentioned earlier. If you can get somebody on board where all of that is aligned, that's what a good hire looks like. And it's very difficult for somebody to leave a role where all those needs, the culture, the values, everything is met because it's just, it's a good fit. It works. Yeah, well, that's a really good point because we are all about retaining our, our teams. And, you know, people, we want to, to create a culture so that people don't want to leave. That is key. And that goes with the work that I do with my clients on positive intelligence, where we work with them to create a positive culture and a positive atmosphere. And what I found through the positive intelligence coaching is that teams feel a lot more valued. They feel more positive. They build better relationships. They've got better well-being. And so therefore their performance increases. So what would you suggest to leaders who want to create that positive culture to do so that they're motivating their team so that they feel valued well f first of all treat them the way you want to be treated yourself um yeah uh, be being a um being a recruitment and uh 
um, a profiling guy, I would profile the team to see where frictions might pop up in them. I'm yeah. sure you do this uh, as part of your offering as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We use a platform called uh, Contribution Compass, but uh, coaching around this will reveal what keeps people in flow, what engages them and what disengages them, uh, what challenges come up for people day to day. And much of the, the, this, uh, the, the time, it's, it's the little things that cause friction and just build up over time. And sometimes we don't even know where, what we're doing it. Um, I'll give you an example of, uh, of that. I had, a, I had a colleague who used to sit in the, the corner of, uh, of the office with their headphones on. Um, and uh, when we did the, the coaching around this initially uh, about 12 years ago, we had an honesty session. And I said, right, um, we need to get all this out on the table. Uh, anything that's bugging each of us, let's let's talk it through. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, I'm going to kick it off. I said, you sit in the corner with your headphones on. I said, I don't understand it. What are you listening to? She said, white noise. I said, I don't know. what? what? I, I, don't, I, I don't understand. She said, because you people on the sales floor make so much noise, I can't focus on my work. Wow. Right. So that, that was a great learning for me. And she said, while we're on the subject, there's something you do that annoys me a little bit. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Surely not, I thought. But, uh, I said, but what's, what's that? She said, when I'm on a call sometimes, you wander up behind me. Um, and she said, I feel that you don't trust me. And I said, no, no, I'm, I'm there to support mm. you. So that little thing that I thought I yeah. had her back and supporting her, she didn't take that, uh, that, that at all. Yeah. And what, what I've learned from all of this, what, uh, what you hate doing is what somebody else loves doing. We're not all built mm -hmm. the same. Understand that and you can watch, work much more effectively together. Yeah. And, and that goes with um, a saying that I often say when I'm developing the leaders and the C-suite is I was brought up by my mum who said, treat people the way you expect to be treated. And you mentioned that earlier. What you've just given is examples of how we actually need to adapt to people and adapt to people's behaviours as well. And it's a situation where I would never sit there with headphones on because I find them quite irritating. However, we need to adapt to other people because that's the way she focuses. So that's a really, really good point. I think, that, I think there are, there are two sides to that. I think when mm. um, the magic happens when you have people moving a little bit closer towards closer. each other. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it, it's not all about the the owner or the business leader or the the, the director calling all the shots. They no. need to make patience as well. When you get a little bit of that, then people start to see. Well, you're doing a little bit for this uh, for for me. I'm going to do a little bit for you, and it all starts to work, and you end up with a much more coherent unit. We, we we talk about flow uh, at every meeting. Um, you know, mm. we, we score how how we are. And if somebody's below a seven, something's going on. Right? Yeah. What's going on? How can I support you? Uh, this yeah. is what, what tasks you doing. I'm working on this. Right? I need to take that off you. I'm going to give that to somebody yeah. else. I'm going to outsource that and uh, and allow you some freedom to do what you should be doing and to do what keeps you in flow. I I think that's that represents good leadership to me. Oh, excellent! Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that also goes with the adapting, which is brilliant. And you said you talk about flow in every meeting. Something else that's very, very powerful for leaders is to actually talk about their mission continuously in every meeting, every opportunity. Let the team know what their mission statement is, because if we let them know what our mission is as leaders, we're going to bring them along and motivate them with us. And we all want to be part of a success story. So how can leaders incorporate their mission into motivating their teams? I, I mentioned uh, um, A players um, earlier. So it's, it's a phrase that we use, uh, we use quite a bit in recruitment, looking at the uh, re recruiting and retaining the best people. Mm. Um, if, if you want to get the best people and you want to keep those people, A players in particular are attracted to success and to strong leaders. You have no chance yeah. of attracting the top talent without clear goals and uh, and, and strong leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. So during uh, during COVID, uh, I I really looked after my team. We had a check in every day, a virtual coffee. Um, I, I had to follow them for for a period. I, I didn't do that for very long because you know we're still a commercial organisation. We still had to make money, but we we checked in uh, all the time. And uh, and my, my mission statement right at the start um, was to. Uh, to help 10,000 service men and women into work. It took yeah. us 20 years to do that. Wow. Um, but, we, but we made it. So um, 
uh, one of my colleagues said, so what, do, what are we going to do next then? And, you know, you've, you've reached your, your goal. I said, we've reached a goal. I said, uh, yeah. the, the mission statement now is to help the next 10,000 into work. Yeah. Uh, so that might take really another, another 20 years, but uh, uh, we're, we're, we're all on board with that because it's, yes. it's, dead, it's dead simple. And uh, the need and, and the want to help ex-military into work is, is very, very strong. I love that we're all on board with that. And that's what this, this interview is all about. It's about motivating and valuing people so that they are on board because that is so, so key. And if we can communicate this, we're going to have a much stronger team who perform at their best and want to stay. is stable. So you're giving us so many insights, Graham. You look like you're about to say something else. Yeah, yes, well spotted. Um, I think that this day and age, retention is very difficult. Um, is. You know, we're, we're in a period where people, uh, a lot of people job hop. Um, you know, gone are the days uh, of a job for life. Mm -hmm. um, but what we what we can and what we must do um, as responsible employers is to do everything we can to find a good balanced workforce where everybody's engaged and, uh, and happy. You may lose one or two people along the way, um, but they will leave with a smile on their face. And uh, there's a lady who's who's uh, who's left me twice and come back. Come back. That's what we want. That's uh, and we and want. The, so the, the door the door is always open. And she's gone for uh, for for different opportunities to to add to her CV. Completely understand that. But we we've always left on on good terms. And uh, and and it has to be that way. So if you create the right kind of environment for uh, for for people to come back rather than i remember a job that, that i left in my uh, in my youth where you know i was i was pretty much uh, uh, uh kicked out by the backside because i was a traitor because i'd i'd, I'd left i just didn't want to be there anymore and there's no way i'd consider going back to a, a role like that why would you um so get get that that's really important to get that uh, to get that right and and if that even if that means holding on to somebody for another 12 months uh, if you can work out even with a small team the difference that that makes to the income, the profitability of the business, even with that small adjustment. Um, again, coming back to the culture and values, just get all of that right and hold on to your people for uh, for a bit longer. Make it a really difficult place to leave um, because people are doing the right things at the right time and and bonding well with each other. You've, you've hit the nail on the head there. That is so wise. And it's all about if people leave, they leave for the right reasons and they're leaving actually not wanting to leave and as you said the door is always open so you've given us such wise words thank you so much Graham for all your yeah. insights it's been absolutely brilliant so I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would like to know where they can find you there's your email address behind you your website behind you your phone number behind you and what are you are you just are you Graham Brown on LinkedIn as well uh, yeah, Graham Brown on uh, on on LinkedIn. The, the the numbers there are my contribution compass uh, profile number. So I'm I'm very open about uh, who I am and what I what I stand for. And uh, the little bit at the bottom there is the uh, um, the silver award for the Armed Forces Covenant as well. So um, you know we we live and breathe what we do. That is brilliant, and that's what I love when people live and breathe what they say and what they do. So thank you so much, Graham, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.